Yo, what's going on you guys? My name is Owen and welcome back to another video. I know it's been a long time since I made a video, but I'm gonna try to make my return now. I'm gonna try to get on a tight schedule, um, but we'll see how it goes. So in today's video, I'm gonna cover what I'm wearing this spring summer season. I know spring has already kind of passed at this point, but I feel like grouping them together makes sense. Um, it's been a long time since I made a video, so I've acquired quite a few new pieces. Um, perfect for the spring summer time, so I figured I'd do a little showcase for you guys, um, do some try-ons, and kind of talk about each of the pieces individually. By the way, if you do enjoy the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like down below. Um, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram. I post more often over there too. But yeah, without further ado, I say we just hop right into it. So the first piece I want to show you guys is probably one of my favorites I own right now. I've posted quite a few photos of myself on Instagram wearing this already. Um, and this is a vintage French workwear jacket from the 1950s. But what's special about this piece uh, specifically is that it is a black colorway. And if you're familiar with French workwear, you know that um, most of the time it comes in a purplish blue indigo color. Um, and when I was doing a private shopping appointment in London, I came across a black variation and it just caught my eye instantly. Um, that shop normally doesn't sell pieces, um, normally it is rent. Um, but luckily I was able to talk the guy into selling me this piece. Um, it's got tons of character put into it. Um, it's like a chore jacket silhouette, so it's got some pockets on the front, but because of the characteristic, because of the character put into it, um, one of the pockets is actually gone, it's been removed, and it's just got these two pockets over here on the left side. Um, two of the buttons have been replaced, it's got a brown button right there and a navy button right there. Um, so that's another cool little unique detail. And it's got an interior pocket, you guys can see the stitching right there, and it's got beautiful contrast stitch. Um, it's got white thread, which sits really nicely against the black cotton. It's like a moleskin cotton, obviously. Um, cotton that's been washed down so many times, it becomes very, very soft, and it almost feels like a suede, actually. Um, the fit is really nice. It's a little bit oversized on me. It's nice and roomy, so I can layer like a flannel or even a hoodie underneath it if I wanted to. The sleeves fit really interesting. Um, I actually have them unbuttoned all the time just because when they are buttoned up they kind of cinch in a little too much um, but I feel like it has a really nice shape once it's unbuttoned it kind of opens up nicely. Um, I usually just button up the first three or first two or these middle two buttons um, just because I feel like it looks really clean I don't like to wear it open very much um, and also because the collar is really round if you guys see the collar shape it's got a very round circular collar. Um, and when you do open up that top button, it kind of makes it a little bit more angular. It looks nice, um, a little bit better silhouette. That's what the backside looks like. Lots of detail, or lots of character put into it. Little paint stains. Um, it's got some repairs going on in the front right there, and just the whiskering on the sleeves looks so nice. Um, and yeah, I'm extremely happy with this piece. It's in between like a jacket and a shirt, so I think it's great for spring summer time. Um, if it gets a little bit cool out, you just throw this over a t-shirt and you're good to go. And yeah, let's move on to the next piece. So next up, I'll actually show you guys an accessory. Um, and it is a pair of sunglasses. Traditionally, I've never really been experimental with sunglasses, um, but I figured now would be a good time to kind of try out something I wouldn't normally uh, wear, I guess. And it is this pair of Helmet Lang um, Spring Summer 99 sunglasses. Um, I think there's a few different shapes he did that year. And this one specifically is kind of like in between an aviator and a more square shape. It's got a nice thin frame um, and then the actual shades I guess are a orangey brown red tone um, whereas normally I'd go with a black. I'm very monochromatic, very boring when it comes to sunglasses but I want to try out something a little bit different. And I actually got this for one of my friends over at Eve Eternity in London. Um, he hooked me up with a great price. It's also where I got these boots too. If you're ever after that smarter um, avant-garde style, Helmet Lang, CCP, Guidi, definitely go check out his store. He's got some great pieces, very well curated. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of these. Um, I'm definitely a big fan and I think the shape suits my, my face shape nicely. But yeah, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Um, I've got two pairs of Guidi's I want to show you guys in this video. And I'll start off with these ones first. These have been my go-to's almost every single day. These are the Guidi 795Vs, and this is more of a combat boot silhouette. No zipper on this pair. Um, as you guys can see, it's got the leather cut laces, uh, and it is like a combat boot silhouette, so it's got the combat boot paneling, which is originally why I bought this pair right here. These are my 
US Army Vietnam era combat boots that I had a tank sole put on. Sorry about the siren, by the way. Um, but I had tank sole put on these, and I've been rocking these for almost a year now. Um, and I originally got those as sort of an alternative to these. And I'm glad I finally was able to find these after a year of searching in like the leather that I wanted. This is a uh, horse leather. Um, so it's got a really beautiful sheen to it. It's nice and shiny. I'm a huge fan of the shape. And I really love how the laces actually have to wrap around the shaft of the boot a few times before you can actually tie the laces up nicely. But because this is the 795V, the V meaning Vibram, it's got the tank sole on the bottom right there, which I think looks really nice. I don't think it's quite the Montagna sole, which is what I have on those, but it's really, really similar. Yeah, I've put miles into these. Um, I'll walk 10 miles a day in these and feel completely fine. They're actually really comfortable, surprisingly. I ended up going with a size 43 on this pair. I usually float in between like a 42 to 44, um, depending on the model. And yeah, so stoked with these. And then similar to the 795Vs, I also picked up a pair of uh, 995s. Um, no V, so it's got the traditional sole on the bottom, which I do need to put a protective sole on. Um, just to make sure they last a little bit longer. But this specific model is a little bit shorter, but it does have the same combat boot paneling going on. Um, it also has a little bit of a more square toe. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's got a slightly different toe shape. And it's also a little bit shorter. Um, and this specific model that I have right here is a reverse Cordovan leather. So the suede is on the outside and on the inside you can see the traditional leather texture but i really love the suede quality with the cordovan as you guys can see depending on the lighting the um texture and the sheen kind of changes sometimes it's a little bit more matted sometimes it's a little bit more shiny which i think looks really really nice um, and i decided to pick these up even though i have those ones because i feel like it's more of a different occasion this one's a little bit smarter um, whereas that one's a little bit more casual kind of a grungier look i guess you could say um, but when I feel like dressing up a little bit more, I'll, you, I'll rock these. Um, but like I said, I do need to get a sole put on them. And these are also a size 43. They fit a little bit tighter though than that pair. Maybe I just need to break them in a little bit more. Um, but I actually got these for a really good price. These were much cheaper than the 795s. I think the 795s are very rare and very hard to come by. Um, but so stoked on these as well. Weedy obviously being known for their leather. They used to be a leather tannery. Um, before they started making their own products. So Guidi Leather is always going to be top of the line. I've got quite a few pairs. Uh, actually, I only have one other pair on this shelf, but I have a couple other pairs outside right there. Um, and yeah, I'm a big Guidi advocate and hopefully I can collect more pairs in the future. And next up, we have a piece that was sent to me from my good friend Ilya Goldman Gubin over in Berlin, Germany. Um, he is an artist and also a, a clothing designer, um, which is a really interesting dynamic because he ends up combining both um, fields into his pieces. And he sent me um, one of his newest creations, which is this hoodie right here. This is the Erde hoodie, um, which is a black hoodie that's been put through a mud dye and also a bleach wash, um, all done by hand and then hand distress and everything. Um, and this is what the final product looks like. Another cool aspect of this piece was also the packaging process, um, sort of like the unboxing experience. He was inspired by this uh, Japanese artist group from the 1950s that um, pushed the boundaries for what abstract and performance art was. Um, and there's this one specific artist in this group, let me pull up his name. Um, his name, what? His name was Suburo Murakimi, and he made wooden frames that he would cover in paper and then line them all up in a row and then run through each of the frames, and that was like his performance art piece. Um, and then uh, Ilya kind of took that idea and reinterpreted it to fit the idea of an unboxing process. So this hoodie was actually encapsulated in a wooden frame covered in paper. And the idea was that you have to break through the paper to get the garment, I guess. Um, and he wanted me to film the process. So I'll show a little clip uh, right here of what that looks like. Um, but it was really interesting. And the cool thing is you can reuse that frame to whatever purpose you want. You could stretch a canvas, or you could just leave the frame and paper as its sort of own standalone art piece. Um, but yeah, besides that, you also get a really sweet hoodie. So this is a zip hoodie, um, and the texture is beautiful because of the mud dye. It's got a really nice finish on it. And you guys can see the discoloration going on everywhere. It's sort of 
um, black and brown stripey detail. And it's got the traditional kangaroo pocket up front. Um, I did get a size medium in this piece and I think it fits really great for like, it's like a nice slim hoodie, it's exactly what I was after. And on the back side, it's got his tag right here. Um, this tag you'll find on pretty much all of his pieces and all of his artworks. Um, I would love to go to one of his shows one time in Berlin, uh, maybe when everything kind of wraps up and travel restrictions are easier, I'll go check one out. Um, it's got his tag right there. And yeah, just figured I'd show you guys a little piece that I got recently. So another one of my daily wears, um, as of recent has been a flannel shirt. Which one is it? This one right here. This is the box shirt from Our Legacy. Um, Our Legacy has been around for a long time. Um, I've acquired a few pieces here and there. I actually have a pair of derbies from them right here, but I do need to get new laces put on them because the lace is stripped off. Um, but this has been one of my favorites that I picked up. It's got a beautiful shape to it. Um, because it's called the box shirt, it's got a really boxy fit. It's nice and wide and then quite short in the body. Um, and it's got like re regular length sleeves. Um, I did end up going with a size 46, which I think equates to like a small. So I definitely recommend sizing down if you want to get um, one of their box shirts. And I really love the texture in this one. There's two colorways that they did in this sort of material. Um, this one's sort of like in between a gray and a blue. It depends on the light. And the other one's sort of like a ivory and blue. Um, this one definitely stood out to me though. It's great for spring and summer. It's good for layering. It's got one little pocket right here and I really love how the collar sits. I think the collar is a great shape. And then the sleeves, another interesting thing is it doesn't have that traditional button open sleeve. It's just a closed off sleeve cuff, um, which is really interesting. And then the texture is beautiful because of the cotton poly blend. It's got a nice um, hand feel. You can actually feel the ridges from the uh, check pattern. But yeah, another little great piece I picked up recently. So if you've been keeping up with my Instagram recently, you would have seen that I've been wearing a few um, just blank pocket tees that are vintage and quite old looking, very beat up. Um, and I, there is two that I want to show you guys. Um, there's nothing special about them specifically. Um, I just want to show you guys what I was wearing recently. And um, this one is a jerseys vintage tee made in USA. It's just a pocket tee very very thin lots of little stains and things like that um and then the other one i have right here is a sort of like a slate blueish black gray color i think i'm going to put it through a black dye just to get a little bit more of a richer color in there because i don't want it to go blue um, just because of how old it is though the color is starting to fade um this one's got way more wear put into it and i actually picked this up from blind date on instagram um you guys can see there's lots of little moth bites everywhere. This one is extremely, extremely thin. And then it's got a pocket as well with also little holes in it. Yeah, like I said, there's nothing too special about these. Um, just a few people have been asking what those tees that I've been wearing are. So I wanted to showcase those real quick. Um, they weren't expensive or anything like that. You could find so many on eBay um, or Etsy. So definitely take a look if you want to grab something like this. So there's two more vintage t-shirts I wanted to show you guys. Um, they're both band tees and the first one is this one right here and I actually picked this up from um, the good folks over at Unsound Rags. More specifically though, Rashawn um, and he did a sort of like a band tee music tee drop a, a couple months ago and he graciously let me have first picks at what I wanted. And I decided to pick up this Depeche Mode tee. Um, this is the New Life tee from 1981. It's very simple, there's no back graphic, it's just got the front um, album art right here. And yeah, it's such a beautiful, beautiful piece. The tag has unfortunately been cut off, so I'm not sure what blank it is. It's in very good condition. Um, doesn't really have any holes or anything like that or any stains. So it's in great, great condition. And I just love the artwork so much and I specifically love the typography as well. And then there's another Unsound Rags pickup that we'll talk about later in the video. Um, but one of my favorite, if not my favorite tee that I own right now. So thank you, Rashawn. And then next up, we have a little bit more of a sentimental piece. Um, this is actually given to me by my dad. Um, this is his The Cure Boys Don't Cry t-shirt from 1983. Um, he got this when he was a kid, or I guess not kid, but a young adult. He's got a pretty big collection, um, and he graciously let me have this one right here. Uh, and yeah, it fits me perfect. I really love the graphic and the colors and everything about it is amazing. 
It's got a little neck hole right here. I can't tell what blanket is because the tag is so faded. You can see it's got lots of holes and stains all over it, um, just from the years that he's been wearing it, I guess. And uh, we'll see what I can pick off him in the future. But for the time being, I'm very thankful that he let me have this one. So next up we have a pair of jeans that I have worn almost every single day since the day I got them. Um, and it is the infamous pair of Unsound Rags jeans um, that they released a couple months ago. Um, the cool thing about these jeans is that they're actually made from vintage Levi's. So they sourced hundreds of pairs of Levi's 501s and then took them all apart and rebuilt them back together to create a new silhouette. So it doesn't have the it doesn't have the traditional Levi's 501 fit. It actually has a slim fit with a boot cut flare towards the end and also a very long inseam. And then all the hems have been released and reinforced. So it sits perfectly on top of shoes. But besides the new fit, um, they've put lots of their own little details. They've replaced all the pocket bags with this beautiful cotton canvas material. Um, the pockets also have been opened up slightly and then reinforced stitching right there. So they just sit really nicely. They're easy to get into. Um, all of the belt loops have been remade. Um, there's black rivets. I think, I'm not sure if they're all black rivets, but my specific pair um, has black rivets. It's got their unsound rags, concrete, uh, like cracked concrete buttons. It's got a button fly right there. Um, and then on the front leg of all the pairs, there will be a raw center seam. And on the back left leg, there will be a center seam as well, um, which has like really cool uh, loose threads hanging off, which creates a nice silhouette. Um, it, because each pair is completely unique, they all have different levels of distressing. Um, there'll be different colors. This specific one is like an ash black, I think they called it. And I was after a pair of black jeans, so it just fit perfectly into my wardrobe. Um, this one has a little knee hole right there that's been patched and repaired. Uh, the bottom hem has got some interesting wear on it. And then on the backs of both legs, it's got some nice heel bite that's been repaired as well. Um, some of the other details, let's see. Uh, they've got a little bison leather tag right here where the Levi's tag would go, and then a bison leather patch with the Unsound Rags logo sitting up top. Um, and the back pockets have been moved as well. You can see where the old pocket used to be compared to where it sits now. Just lots of little details that make these jeans worth it, in my opinion. I was so happy when they hit me up um, about getting a pair because um, just fit right into my wardrobe as after some black jeans and wanted to support the boys any way I could. Um, so thank you very much, Fernando and Ty over at Unsound Rags and the whole team over there. I actually do need to get the, a little repair done. I've put a new hole in the butt area. Um, and then you can also see some of the restitching that's gone on here where it's all mismatched. Uh, I'm guessing this was taken from a different part of the jean, not this back panel. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the next item. Another good friend of mine, Magnus, over in London, has just released his own uh, essentials collection for his brand, Ronning. And um, he graciously blessed me with a pair of the Everyday Fatigues in the black colorway. Um, if you're after any sort of essentials, I would definitely check out his new collection. He's got um, almost everything you could need. It's a great base to kind of build your wardrobe off of. Um, he gave me a little showcase of the whole collection and everything. And these um, really caught my eye because they are based off the OG 107 silhouette. If you're familiar with um, US Army, like vintage gear, the OG 107s are a classic pair of trousers. And he kind of put his own twist on it with a new colorway and new material. Um, this is a twill herringbone material, so you guys, it might be hard to see on camera, but it's got a stripey um, sort of texture to it with the different weave. And then it's got the classic OG 107 pocket. It's like sort of like a box pocket. It's got a zipper button fly right there, and then two button back pockets. Another cool thing is that he released two different sizes per waist size. So I got a size 30 long um, because I wanted them to sit a little bit longer on me. I'm not entirely comfortable with wearing a cropped fit. So I got the longs, and if you wanted a more shorter fit, or if you're on the shorter side, go with the regular length. Um, I think that was a great call on his end. Um, and there is a couple other colorways that he offers in this pant too. But yeah, great prices, amazing quality. I'm so, so happy with these. Moving on to the last item. This is another heater in my wardrobe. Um, this is the Shot Perfecto in this beautiful brown leather. I've never owned a motorcycle jacket before. Um, and I figured I have to go with the classic, the original, the Perfecto. 
Um, I believe this is from the 70s or 80s, but I could not find any sort of uh, information on the tags inside. Um, and I did go with a size 46. I didn't know what size to go with. And this fits a little bit oversized on me, which I'm completely okay with because I can actually layer a hoodie or um, something else underneath. Um, but if it did want the more traditional fit, I probably should have gone with a 42 or 44. Um, maybe I'll get a black one in a smaller size. So they do have a brown one. But yeah, I would definitely invest in a motorcycle jacket if you don't have one already. I think it's a really classic silhouette um, and I feel like it fits into so many different styles as well. And I'm really happy with this brown colorway too. Um, I think it's a little bit more unique than the classic black. But yeah, I won't talk too much about it just because it is such a well-known silhouette and I feel like motorcycle jackets don't vary too much. Got three zip pockets on the body. Because it is a motorcycle jacket, the zipper does go all the way up. Um, keeps you protected and yeah, I feel like that's it for this one. And that is going to conclude it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm going to try to get back into making videos. I'm going to shoot for one every two weeks. Um, sometimes it might be a little bit more frequent, but I'm going to play it safe with one every two weeks. If there's anything you guys want to see in a future video, let me know. I've got lots more pickups I could show you guys. I could also do a styling video. Um, or I could do something a little bit more vlog based. So let me know what you'd like to see. And if you did enjoy the video, please drop a like down below. It helps me out so much. Have a good day. See you next time.